and that is consider, consider the, short, the shortness of this lifespan, how short it is. Consider the utter meaninglessness of everyday life. The things that we put so much attention on, the things that we prioritize. What is the body except for the expression of an intention that was born out of your spirit, out of your consciousness, out of your soul, out of your beingness, out of the totality of your beingness beyond this life? What is the body but an immediate extension, expression, a voice of spirit having an intention to know itself in a certain way, in a certain niche, niche and to express itself in a certain way or niche. And consequently, to spread itself with a certain frequency to aid others in their own development and inspiration and remembrance. The thing about third density incarnation is that there is this energetic veil that comes over the consciousness to where the consciousness that's then seemingly operating the body is separated not really, but seemingly separated from the memory database of spirit. It's one of the rules. It's one of the mechanical procedures of incarnation. So we don't know who we are when we open our eyes on this side of the veil as a, as a child. We don't know who we are. So we learn to develop identities. And these identities are often based, almost always based, in survival, uh, safety, worth, protection, accumulation, security, insurance. So these are the building blocks of our identity when that identity is living its life unaware of the whole totality complex of the beingness, the eternal consciousness that actually animates the body, that gave life to the body, that wanted to put a portion, a small portion of its consciousness projected into a particular density, a particular civilization, using a particular form to express itself, to experience the world at that level, and to learn about itself. The issue, the difficulty, the challenge is that since in our early years, our forming years, we pick up all these ideas about security and safety and, and pleasure and comfort, that we start treating the device which is here to express an intention as the very purpose for being here. Your vehicle, your circumstances which come with the vehicle, because they only apply, they're only relevant to the vehicle. My circumstances are only really relevant to my identity as a body, right? So body and circumstances can be mentioned under the same name in this particular lesson. So what happens is all we know is the expression of our intention. We don't remember our intention usually. That comes later in life. We start to remember if we're on a spiritual path uh, that's accelerated. But when we don't have that clarity, we mistake the true nature of our life to be the life itself. Again, most of us, in the back of our minds, you might not even think you're thinking this, but most of you are thinking this automatically at a subconscious or unconscious level every single day. And that is, you're, it's even hard to explain, but we have this assumption of a life. We have this assumption of a lifetime and the span of that lifetime, as we imagine it's going to be, as we see you know, in the movies and with our grandparents and how life unfolds, we have a very profound, strong, well, not so profound, but a strong, a solid image of what life is like and what is meaningful in life and how to accumulate well-being and security as we go along. Make sense so far? You follow me? Okay. So we have this image in our minds of what life is about. And it all pertains to keeping the body um, healthy, thriving, okay, abundant, surrounded by people they love, um, comfort, right? Nourishment, food, shelter, 
what have you. This is a concept that's in your mind right now. It's an unconscious assumption. You assume you're going to live for a certain amount of years. In truth, you have no idea. You might die walking out of this room. Maybe I hired Grim the Reaper just for you guys because you didn't do your homework. <laughs> He's right behind that door. You stand no chance. Wait, is it the Grim Reaper? What is it? <laughs> Grim the Reaper? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like that better, actually. Grim the Reaper. So you have no idea. It's an assumption, okay? And so every day you live not knowing that you're living by an assumption which prioritizes, which pours all of your life force, your precious energy, your precious confidence into trying to accumulate things that will ensure that you fit into that image as well as you can. Again, security, survival, safety, comfort, love, acknowledgement, appreciation, worthiness. So we miss out on the most amazing opportunities that come our way, such as these teachings, for example, such as self-realization, such as knowing God as our very own being, such as Tasting, being able to at least taste, if not become, endless bliss. For that window to eternity to open for you, for your crown to crack open, for the light of God to pour in, and for you to know that you're not this limited self. And that life is not about gaining security. It's about doing the most radical possible thing that you can think of in each moment. Just to provide some contrast. Not saying you should do that every second, it'll tire you up. <laughs> it'll remove perhaps too much substance from your life, too much solidity. But for contrast, it's good to consider that maybe life is more about doing the most radical possible thing you can think of every single moment. But we don't do that. Why don't we do, don't do that? And if you're thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, why am I not doing that? Suddenly an awareness grows of this subconscious template that you've built, this image that you've created of what life is all about and how long you're going to live and what that's going to look like. Most people have no clue that they have very, very, very defined images of what life is going to be like and how they're going to live it and how long and in what way and what's important. You don't notice that when you're just interacting with someone, but this is in the background of your mind all the time and you're wasting your energy fulfilling that image. That's your intention that you've created after you were born. It's not the intention you had why you were born, before you were born. What caused you to be here? They're completely different intentions. One is driven from an eternal perspective, from the perspective of growth and service and love and expansion and transformation and epicness, busting paradigms together, helping humanity, helping the planet, healing this world, changing, shifting, growing, expanding. That's the intention that gave the body that you have today. The body consciousness forgot about that intention, started reacting to pain and pleasure, to other people saying what's true and what's not true, started taking that on and creating this distorted image and intention of what life is all about, which is pretty much opposite to the intention that brought you here. That's why so many people struggle with finding their joy or their true passion or their inspiration or flowing. It's because we're living from two contradictory expectations. The eternal expectation of live freely, every moment, love fully. Live because you're already dead. You have nothing to lose, so give. Versus, I can die and this life is about this life. You see, this life is not about this life. This life has never been about this life. It will never be about this life. This life is about you 
the you that's already dead. Spirit. Consciousness. Consciousness is already dead. It doesn't have a body. It has a journey. It has an intention. It has an infinitely complex, higher density vibratory pattern of, of learning and knowing and knowledge and memory. Its own way of knowing the Creator. But it came here to know and express the Creator as freely as it can. But again, beyond the veil, when the veil kicks in, we forget and we start reacting to circumstances. These teachings can get you out of this. If only you practice. And so self-realization is one of the most empowering paths you can take. It's one of the most actualizing paths you can take. Because what if you remember who you are? That you're not this body. That you did not come here for security, safety, longevity, health. Sure, it's great to be healthy, whatever. You know, it allows you to express yourself in the way that is meaningful to your soul. But if you're connected to your soul and you lift from that passion, there's no way, there's no way that you're not going to be healthy, at least in the departments where you need to be healthy to perform what you came here to be, as long as you honor that frequency and that intention. So again, consider that you are too identified with your body as we speak. You are giving way too much significance to your life. Okay? To think about your life kills you. To think about death sets you free, makes you come alive. It's the opposite way. Do not try to protect your life. Protect your death. When you die, what do you wish to have learned? What do you wish to look back on? What do you wish you left behind? I have that with me in pretty much any choice that I make. Ultimatums. I love ultimatums. Now, it may not be for everyone, but I don't see how else one could be on point all the time and remember what's true versus what's not true, what's important versus what carries no authority whatsoever, no significance. The more significance you give to this lifetime and being alive and how you're going to spend your life and whether you make the right and wrong choices, the more credit you give to this world that is given to you as a mental image by the society you were born here to change. Oops, you became just like them. And so it's important and it requires discipline, it requires devotion, it requires the true desire to free yourself both in the empowerment perspective as well as the self-realization perspective or the enlightenment perspective. You need to know what is true beyond this veil. You need to know what is true beyond this illusion so that you can then express yourself in this illusion freely from love, from service, from a state where your priorities are straight. And when your priorities are straight, you will be healthy, you will be thriving, you will be abundant, you will be in love. with being alive, instead of being in love with preventing death. Embrace the fact that you're already a goner. <laughs> Few things are more liberating than to realize that you're already dead. Because then the question arises, well then what? Then what's important? Again, I think this is one of, the, one, of the few, one of the few qualities that have distinguished or, yeah, distinguished me from most other people and have allowed me to be who I am today at the seemingly early age, young age, which is prioritization, proper, meaningful prioritization, to have the discernment and the wisdom to not scratch the itch of comfort and safety and security, to instead scratch the far greater, subtler, more invisible itch of your soul constantly knocking on your back door, the back of your Ajna Chakra, right there. Can I come in? Can I come in? Constantly telling you what's most important, guiding you, inspiring you. But we've accumulated too many ideas to listen, 
to the voice of that spirit. So we need to shed that self-realization. A basic level of self-realization is required for everyone if you want to live an empowering life. Now, it doesn't have to be permanent, doesn't have to be all the time, doesn't have to be in all ways, but at least a basic understanding and an experiential access point, a knowledge, an inner knowing that you are free beyond this life, that you're not the body, that this body is the expression, it's the pen through which you are writing your testament to God. And to not idolize the pen over the story you came here to write. You know, that's what we do. We value this over the reason this is here. You see the difference? 